Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just got a full step-by-step -step guide tonight showing you how to replace the front brake discs and pads on this 2012 Ford C-Max. And it's quite a straightforward job. We'll run you through everything a step at a time. Um, just before we get into the video, if you check out the description below, I put links to all the parts used, all the tools, any torque settings, with links to where you can get them all from as well. Uh, obviously we're using two poster ramp today, it does make the job a little bit easier uh, but to be honest they're not bad to do really at all on the floor. If I, if I want using a ramp, I'll simply just jack them up both sides, under, you won't be under the, like, the inner sill, jack them up, put it on some axle stands just to give you a decent bit of access that's all. So, um, just before I put it up in there, just going to remove the brake fluid, brake fluid reservoir cap, just as we push the pistons back the fluid's going to come up and it might rise over the top. So. Uh, also, if you're interested in any other C-Max videos, we've replaced the timing belt on this one. You can check out the link above, I'll find that in the description below. There's quite a few other videos you might want to check out on there. So, we'll just get it up in the air, get the wheels off and just run you for everything a step at a time. Uh, just to get the wheels off, just got a 19mm socket on these. Obviously one of them you might have, you might not have, but well, this one's got locking wheel nuts on it. So. Now that we've got the wheel off, just show you the reason we're replacing them. They don't look too bad from the outside here. You can see there's a bit of the pad left there. Um, but the inside pad is getting quite low, so soon getting ready ready for replacing. Um, we are fitting discs, don't look too bad on the outer face. Um, but the inner face is quite a big lip on the outside there. And again on the inside at the bottom there as well. So I'm going to put disc and pads on this one. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, just going to use a flat bladed screwdriver. Just flick underneath that section of it there and just pop out, pop that out the bottom, pop it out again at the top and we'll run you onto the next bit after that. So I'm just going to use a large flat bladed screwdriver now. You don't have to do this right now, you could get the piston off and then push, um, get the caliper off and then push the piston back with some pliers. Um, but just to start with, I'm just going to just work in there and just pry it back at least enough. I might pry it back all the way if it works well, um, but if not, I might just pry it back a bit just so that when we can pull it, when we pull it off, and we'll just do the last bit with the pliers. But I'll just work it back a bit for now. It's pretty much got it all, the, got the piston all the way worked back, but double check that once we've got it off. But now that that's off, you're just simply got, you're going to have to undo the sliders. There's a little cap on the top there, a little cap on the bottom. Now that we've got the caps off, just come around the back there. You just see in there, basically, you've got the two sliders, one at the bottom, one at the top. I'm just going to want the 7mm Allen key just to get the two sliders out. So, I'll crack them off now, take them all the way out. You can sort of hang the caliper up, obviously you don't want to be too rough with it, but as long as you're sort of gentle, you can just hang it gently on the uh, flexios there, it's not going to do it any damage. So. You can just see the brake pad now, you can now see sort of how big the lip on the disc was, it just shows how much it ate into that section of the pad there, so and that's the inner pad, and just pop the outer pad out. I'm just going to use a big pair of grips, just on the piston there, just to make sure it's all the way back. I did go a little bit uh, further back there. Obviously, if you can't push this piston back, it will be reasonably tight, but not bad. You should easily be able to push it back with a pair of pliers. Um, but if it is tight and you can't get it back, obviously the piston's seized. Um, so sort of a couple of things you can try is pressing the brake a bit, just trying to push it out. Obviously, you don't want to push it out too far. Um, just peel the seal back just, just lightly so you can get in there with some WD-40 or some penetrating oil. And you might be able to just work it back and forward quite a few times and just see if you can uh, salvage it. So, uh, but this one's nice and free. So, I'm 
just gently put the caliper over the top of the disc there. The next thing we're going to do, we just need to take the actual carrier itself off. And we've got two more bolts here. So you've got an 18 mil socket to get them undone. Crack that off now and get the carrier out of the way. carrier out of the way. Now some discs have little disc screws on them securing them but these don't actually have them on so you can just simply pop the disc off there. It's out of the way. Now with the disc out of the way and the hub isn't too bad on this one someone sort of greased it up quite well before. And I'm just going to give all this a bit of a clean up. I only really want a bit of copper grease just around the sort of centre bit in there. I don't really want too much on it because if you, go, uh, if you get too much on there, it might sort of end up so that the disc doesn't actually sit back correctly as it should. So, I'll just give that a quick clean up now. And so hubs, just, just give the hub a little bit of a clean up there, so it's not too bad on this one. Next thing I'm going to do is just give the carrier a bit of a clean up, short wire brush. And just give the carrier a really good clean, just in the bits there where the pad runs. See where the pad's been running on there. Just going to give that a really good scrub up now. Some carriers have shims in for the pads to sit in, um, but the pads just sit directly in them on this one. So just give that a quick clean up and that's ready for refitting. That's the carrier nice and clean now, ready to refit. Next thing we'll do, just get the brake disc out. We're ready to put the, uh, put the disc on, then we can put the carrier on after that. The new brake discs often come with like a waxy sort of coating on them. Those will give that a bit of a clean off of some brake cleaner. Um, it's obviously just on there to protect it so it doesn't uh, rust up in storage. <laughs> now it's just going to fit the carrier back into place now. You don't really want a big copper grease in the actual carrier bolts. If anything, you can refit them with a bit of Loctite. See the original bolts there, have got a bit of Loctite on them. So. Now, but these do want a good nip. I haven't got the torque setting for them. They don't need to be mega tight, but they are a good nip. And the next thing we're going to do is just clean the sliders up a bit, might just put them on the wire wheel, give them a good clean up, and then we're going to put these in with a bit of grease and just work them back and forth through the uh, through where they locate in the caliper. So just do that quick next. And just see the sliders are nice and clean now. So we're just going to get some normal grease on there. Again, with the threads, you don't need to grease the threads there. If anything, you can just put a bit of a bit of Loctite, if anything, on there. So um, I'm just going to put them in as straight as they are. Just see the sliders are nice and free now. Next thing we're going to do is just clip the inside pad into the uh, piston there. Now you don't need to grease this back surface up on these, it's already got like an anti rattle shim on there. So the only thing I will do is once I've clipped it in, I'm just going to put the grease just on the actual parts where the pad will slide on the carrier there. But you don't really want to be using copper grease, anything with ABS, you should really use ceramic paste. The copper grease can actually interfere with the ABS. So. We're just going to put a bit of that and we'll just run it on that sort of section of the pad there around there where, where it's in contact with the carrier that's on. And then we'll do the same again with the outside pad as well. I 
and they're ready to locate the caliper back over everything else. Also, I've just pushed the sliders just, just recessed back enough so we can get it on properly. The best way I sort of find to put it on and just find a few places is just wiggle it around and just push the actual sliders in until you can feel them just start to locate into the hole. And all you want to do is just wind them in really gently, one at a time, just make sure that you get the threads okay and um, without cross-threading it. So. And with the slider bolts again, I don't want to be mega tight really, just for a good nip. Caps back on. Now that I've done that, last step, we've just got to uh, locate the clip back in. So it can be a little bit fiddly to do sometimes these. Sometimes you've got to sort of hold them in place, prise it round. You might just want a hammer just to give one of them a little bit of a tap to get it in, but just have a go at that now. Actually went in fairly easy on this one tonight so um, but that's everything done on this side so as you can see quite a straightforward job really um, all we'll have to do is obviously we'll just do exactly the same on the other side and um, put the wheel on torque it up we'll just put the torque setting on there as well um, but one thing you want to do as soon as you've done it just make sure you pump the brake pedal out and um, before doing anything as well so obviously the piston's right back so if you just start driving it off you'll get a couple of full presses where the brake's not actually doing anything so but yeah, we'll just fly through the other side. I'll leave it recording while we're doing that. Just put it back together, run you through the torque settings of the wheels. And then obviously when it is done and down as well, just, you just want to be checking the brake fluid reservoir and just putting the cap back on. If the fluids come up too high, you might just find that you start to just taking a little bit of the fluid out, that's all. So but obviously check that once you've pressed the brake pedal down as well. So we'll just fly through the other side and just figure it and just get it finished on. Right, so that's the wheels all torqued up now. Just quickly going to pump the brake pedal out. Just watch your first few presses go right down. So just pump it out until it's nice and hard. And you know your pistons are out then. Final thing, just going to check the brake fluid level. You can still see it's uh, still just about on the max there, so it's ideal, we don't have to take any out of that. And just put the cap back on there. That's the front brake, disc and pads replaced. As you can see, quite a straightforward job really. If you're interested in any of the parts or the tools used, um, just check out the description below. So I'll put links to, to all them in there, and I'll put lists to all the torque settings as well. So uh, if you want to check out any of the other videos, just subscribe to the channel. I'm just going to get it off the ramp now, I'll give it a quick run down the road, just make sure the brakes feel okay, spread them in a little bit. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.